Hello and welcome. I am Exalite and this is my channel. Today we're going to do another segment of Haunted Texas. So get in the car, put your seatbelt on, and let's head to San Antonio. Our first stop is going to be the Spanish Governor's Palace, which is also known as the Military Presidio de Bejar. It was constructed in the early 18th century and became the capital of the region known at the time as Tejas. No Spanish governor ever actually lived there, though. The building was the home of the Presidio captain, who was also the acting governor of Tejas. The governor's palace was established to protect the Mission de Valero, which is also known as the Alamo, as well as the community at large. Treaties with the Indians were negotiated there, and an assortment of dignitaries, including politicians and military officers, often stayed the night at the Spanish governor's palace, which continued to serve as the capital of Tejas region for more than a century until the Declaration of Texas Independence. This is the last surviving example of an early aristocratic Spanish house in Texas, and in the 20th century, the National Geographic Society proclaimed it the most haunted building in downtown San Antonio. I would think that that was a title that would be hard to come by in downtown San Antonio considering that it's one of the bloodiest places in Texas and was a site of a very bloody war at the Alamo. So let's find out why it's the most haunted building in downtown San Antonio. One of the spirits said to haunt this old building is said to be that of a little girl. In the 1860s, the daughter of one of the officials was playing in the back of the palace. The maid who was caring for this child became concerned when the little girl did not come inside after a few minutes. The Presidio captain and his servants conducted an intensive search of the grounds, but they could not find the missing child. Then, about 20 years later, a gang broke into the palace with the intentions of robbing it. The only person inside the palace was a young maid. They insisted that the young woman tell them where the family had hidden their valuables, but she said she didn't know. The angry robbers tied up the poor girl and threw her down the 37-foot well in the back, where she drowned. In the 1930s, some workmen who were doing some remodeling of the palace found the bones of a little girl behind an altar in the palace. Nobody knows for sure if these were the bones of the little girl who had gone missing 70 years earlier, but I think it's safe to say that they probably were, and no one knows for sure why they were behind the altar or who put them there for years staff at the spanish governor's palace have reported seeing small footprints on top of the bed in one of the bedrooms they think that perhaps the little girl still enjoys jumping up and down on the bed in the early 2000s, a maintenance man named Jesse Rico claimed to have heard wailing noises coming from the well. He also said that on some mornings when he arrived at the palace, he found chairs moving all around the building. Others say that a large old tree in the back of the building is also haunted. It is known as the Tree of Sorrow because it was used as a hanging tree in the 18th and 19th centuries. Reportedly, 46 men were hanged from this tree. In recent years, visitors and employees say that they have seen the agonized faces of several men in the trunk of the tree. Some of the faces appear to have bulging eyes. No one knows for certain the identity of all the spirits inhabiting the Spanish governor's palace, but According to local historians, 12 battles were raged in and around this area where the building is located, and hundreds of soldiers died in what is some of the bloodiest land of Texas. 
It would be surprising if the Spanish governor's palace were not haunted. And where are we going next? We're going to head over to the Vilmaine Railroad tracks. Paranormal activity has been reported for years at the crossing over the railroad tracks near the intersection of Shane and Villamain Roads, and it is one of the most visited haunted sites in San Antonio. It is said that in the 1930s or 40s, a school bus loaded with children was heading towards the intersection when it stalled at the railroad crossing. The front wheels of the bus had crossed over the tracks without difficulty but the rear wheels became stuck between pieces of wood that had been placed between the tracks to accommodate the trains. The driver made several attempts to gun the engine and drive over the tracks, but then the bus stalled. The driver's concern escalated dramatically when he heard the shrill whistle from an approaching freight train. The panic-stricken children tried to open the windows of the bus so they could climb out, but the windows were difficult to open even for adults. By the time the engineer became aware of the plight of the school bus sitting on the tracks in front of him, it was too late. He pulled on the brake but could not stop the train in time. Ten children and the bus driver are said to have died in the resulting crash. Since then, People say that the spirits of the children who died will push any car that stops near the tracks to safety. For decades, drivers have reported that they drove halfway over the rail tracks at this crossing and then stopped the car and put it in neutral. The car would move against gravity up the incline and over the tracks. When they got out of the car to see who pushed them over the tracks, they found tiny handprints on their trunk. Others have reported seeing the ghosts of the children killed in the bus crash. A woman who lived near the site said that one spring day, she was sweeping the floor in her house when she noticed a little girl, about eight years old, standing at her screen door. She opened the door, and the girl told her that something terrible had happened at the railroad crossing. The lady was about to ask her what had happened, but the girl immediately bolted around the corner and disappeared. The next week, the lady was walking in front of her house when the same girl walked up. She said that her name was Emily and asked if her mother were home. The lady asked where her mother lived, and the child pointed to the house that the woman was renting. The little girl warned the lady to be careful of the railroad crossing. She then vanished before the lady's fear-stricken eyes. A few days later, one of the woman's neighbors told her of a little girl, about eight years old, who had also appeared at her doorway and warned her to stay away from the railroad crossing. Some people say that the odd phenomenon of a car defying gravity to travel uphill while in neutral is just an optical illusion. However, this does not stop the people from San Antonio who continue to congregate at the site of this accident on Halloween and other times of the year to see for themselves if the ghosts are real. Thank you for coming with me today. I hope you like these segments. I enjoy them. If you would please give this video a thumbs up and share the video with people you know who like this type of content and if you would like to be subscribed and you are not please go ahead and push that button and also if you'd like to be notified when my content goes live please click that bell and choose the option you would like for notifications thank you and good night